never thought that I would be the one who turned you down and you disagree. We've been on and off, you were never mine to keep.
evening. Good evening, Jeff. Hey, Jerry. We are hey, live. Jerry. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Friday, June twelfth. Yet another cycling cafe. The week in uh, in review. It's. Uh, I like your shirt, by the way. Yeah, I like your shirt. That's yeah, nice. <laughs> you look very professional now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you. And the back. <laughs> the back. And the back. Yeah. Ah, nice. Good quality, also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very good quality. Our first order with Custom Ink. I exactly. think they did. They knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Yeah. Much quicker than uh, than initially thought. So that's uh, it's exactly. always good to uh, under promise and over deliver. Uh, <laughs> Jack. Yeah. They did exactly. That, so that's uh, that's nice and. Uh, Ah, snap! I, f I forgot the uh, the car magnets that we had. I should have yeah, said yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll post something uh, online uh, for that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, how was your week? Uh, it was good. How was yours? Yeah, pretty good. Very busy, uh, busy at work, and um, but managed to get a couple of uh, rides in. Um, actually, went out on what was it? Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. yeah, Tuesday. So it was uh, was nice. The weather is beautiful over here, so it uh, it's very inviting to uh, to go out for a for a ride. Yeah. Um, I saw that you um, did some loops on the corporate park. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, so I don't know if uh, everyone knows, but in Pennsylvania, we've moved from red to yellow. So that's opened up. That was just this past weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Is when that, that changed. So now they're allowing more um, like groups of 25 to be together. Yeah. Um, so slowly people are starting to put together group rides, but it's been uh, people that you know, people that they've been quarantined with. It's not just get together with people you don't know, right? Okay. Um, so we did our Tuesday nighter. There was four of us that showed up for that. Okay. And these are all people that I know and they, they were all work from home and they've been very careful. Um, so I think that it's, it's a good sign that we're moving in this direction. I think people just still need to be careful about it. Yeah, so the same group said uh, on Thursday, let's meet at QVC, mm -hmm. the, the uh, shopping network here yeah. that we have in Westchester. And they said, we'll just do laps around their parking lot because it's a closed course and, you know, can't get into too much trouble there. Uh, what I didn't know was there was two QVCs. <laughs> so oh, okay. I, I went see. out. <laughs> that that yep. kind of explains the. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's supposed to be at 5:30, and no one's here. This is very strange. Yeah. I was like, I looked on my phone. Yep, there's another another QVC two miles down the road. So I went there. There's everyone. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but it was good. It was good to. Uh, talk to people and see what they're going through. You know, I think everyone's been very careful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. good. I think we just need to take, take it slowly. Yeah. And just be, be careful and, uh, pay attention, right? Mm -hmm. No, uh, no snot rockets. No, just it's common sense. Um, in bigger groups, it's, um, uh, it might be more difficult, especially when you, go hard i guess people tend to forget stuff so i i'm i'm avoiding the bigger groups but like you said uh, the four or six people um, people that you know and, and and just carefully get back into group cycling and uh, yeah see how everything else plays out obviously mm -hmm. yeah they also announced that the first mountain bike race is going to be i believe it's july 11 oh. which is in grenogue um, so yeah, almost a, a month from now. So, um, you know, there, th this is all based on if we go to green, if we're able to get to green, um, but they're taking pre-registration for it. Um, they asked people if they'd be willing to come out and do it if they hold, held the event. And the consensus was yes. Everyone, everyone said in the comments that they were going to do it. Yeah. And then speaking to some people, um, like Bob Ruther, he said, Mm, it's, it's, it's a little too soon. Like he just doesn't feel comfortable with yeah. that. So he's, he's not going to attend that race. Um, and I think it, it, this kind of came quickly. You know, I felt like we were just in full lockdown and now they're already planning our next race. Yeah, it's like, exactly. yeah. we got to take it slowly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The official, 
UCI calendar doesn't start until um, August, really mm. August, September, October. Yeah, and uh, but then you also see that on a local level, people um, want to organize races. For example, mm. in in Belgium, they're talking about organizing some local races um, for probably local local people and. Uh, um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if it's if it's rushing into things. It's. Uh, um, I heard a, another podcast. They were talking about uh, the UCI calendar and that some things are are arranged strangely, right? So let's assume that that things go move forward and uh, they're able to ra uh, to race, and and everything is built around the the Tour de France, right? That's that's really the the pinnacle of the races and that's that's that has to move forward uh, but they allow for example the national championships to just take place just prior to that so they have a couple of races in france and um, they would send all the riders back to their local countries um, do their national championship and then go back and 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 that's silly right so mm. why wouldn't you keep everybody in in france together with the team and i don't know uh plan the, the national championship at, a, at another date just just from a practical point of view because the logistics of traveling meeting your family again you don't know it's yeah it's uh nobody has the the playbook what the perfect mm. <laughs> um, right let's say uh, the way of managing this is but yeah it's uh, it, yeah and there's going to be a cap of 250 participants so i figured that if people were really excited and they wanted to pre-register and it gets filled up then at least the promoter got all of their uh you know all the registrations but if it comes down to it and it's like okay we're going to do this race there's open slots yeah it's going to be it's going to be it's gonna be hard to make that decision, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see what we're, where we are in a month. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So um, one uh, one person that's that's getting his miles in is um, is a Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think he. Uh, it's interesting. Let me switch uh, my screen and uh, show you what he's up to. Uh, This is Stuart, and uh, he's in he's in Philly, mm. um, and I believe his yeah his text says what a beautiful day. Maybe I'll head to Pittsburgh? Question <laughs> mark. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know more about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's following a trail. It's uh, I believe it's mostly roads, but there's some gravel in there too. Mm. Um, and I believe the record is set at 28 hours uh, to go from f from the, uh, the, um, the Liberty Bell in Philly all the way to Pittsburgh. Right. So he mapped out the whole ride. He's going to try to come close to that record. Um, and, then, and then he's going to take a train back home. So oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> hopefully he'll be home on Sunday. It's, it's how many miles is it again? I think it's 310 miles. 310 miles, yeah. Yeah. So. So we. Uh, 310 miles. So he's looking at. I don't know, 13, 40 miles average would would bring you to. But that, that's assuming that you are riding constantly at that that pace. He's probably at a higher pace, but you have to take your breaks now and then. So mm -hmm. 28 hours. It, it's doable for him, right? If yep. he. Uh, um, pending any mechanicals or, or flat tires or other stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to find out uh, how he does, but that's, uh, that's, a, that's a monster uh, monster ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty impressive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's not one to shy away. And if you can see his bike, he's got aero bars on there. He's got oh, yeah. bags on pretty much every part of the frame. Um, so yeah, he's, he's decked out and he's ready to go. Yeah, and he's wearing the new, uh, uh, Trestle Bridge racing kit, I see. Yep. 
Yep, our new team kit. We yeah. just got that uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, so. yeah, that's that's a great looking kit. Yeah, as good as the black uh, lowland cycling uh, shirts, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. He came over uh, the day before. Or he came over yesterday mm -hmm. to just for me to check out his bike and make sure his wheels were true. And he's like, oh, these tires are, they have a little wobble in them. I'm like, don't worry. <laughs> By Sunday, you're not going to be using them. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. do 300 miles on them. They just become trainer tires, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you got to keep it in perspective. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, that, that's, uh, that's, that's a great adventure um, and, and, and a lot of miles. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably... Yeah find some time to uh, to speak with him uh, soon yeah 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 definitely want to get his take on it maybe he can join one of our friday night uh, live events and uh, give us an update yeah yeah we should uh, bring the picture so yeah yeah that's good yeah the um uh, one one other thing that i wanted to show talking about routes and, and planning your routes uh strava um, has a new feature and i have to kind of look away to my other other screen um, and I've been playing around with it. Um, did you did you already look into it? I have not. No. They had a route planner already, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, but it, this one is new and improved. So it's, uh, it, I think it's it's pretty cool. So um, let me go. Yeah, back to the screen. myself out of the way <laughs> and um, so so you go to uh, uh, your routes um, and then you can start planning planning your ride and what what's neat is that it shows the heat map over here it's in blue um, so that's you probably can change the color I have to figure that out but you'll see all the busy routes over here so <laughs> for example if you go to marsh creek over here i guess this is where all the mountain bike uh, routes uh, are you see right. in the in a darker uh, darker blue um and uh, uh 282 over here um obviously here you have the the the, the trail uh chester valley trail which is in uh, in in dark blue uh, point being that as a cyclist um this is uh harmony hill yeah see that um point being that um if you want to plan your route um, you can quite easily see and find which roads are used often by cyclists you, so you can pick uh, running or or cycling um and you can pick any surface type, um, so you can do a couple of filters there in, in order how you want to do it. So, so, so let's. So, what if we would start in uh, over here, right? And I would zoom out and. zoom out really far if I want to and we would go to Pittsburgh <laughs> mm -hmm. right zooming in here let's say uh, Pittsburgh somewhere around <coughs> city center here it's updating the route while it's updating so you can immediately share it with somebody else or you can uh, make it public um, it will so show you over here that okay 74% is paved we have 4% uh, dirt roads 22% not specified and again the thing that I like about it is that this is this is meant for cyclists will it always put you on the right road mm, probably not uh, but it it is optimized for for cyclists. I I, I tried it. If I said okay, I want to move from or, or go from Exton to 
uh, downtown Philly, it would pick the, the route over the trail and so, so cyclist friendly type of road. So that's, uh, so that's nice. Um, yeah, yeah really good. I'm not sure how it calculates the, uh, the moving time, but um, it's uh, 326 miles and in we, can, we can do it in 20 hours. According okay. to the <laughs> <laughs> well, like push push the pace, huh? Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, does it show the elevation? Yeah, at, at twenty-four thousand feet of uh, oh wow climbing. Yeah, so that's oh boy, that's something else, isn't it? But you have to to cross the Poconos over here, and that's right. not not one hill. It's like many, 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 many hills over here. So yeah, yeah that's. Uh, yeah, twenty four thousand. That's uh, that's probably what uh, what will impact your speed. It's actually bringing you to Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Lancaster, Harrisburg. So he should hit that in at night. It'll be dark when he hits those. Yeah. How um, long? Uh, how how late did he leave? Um, I believe he left at like one o'clock. Oh. Okay. Which. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a lot of time in the sun, um, which I know Bob Ruther and I were trying to talk him into going at like 7 or 8 at night, start then. Yeah, exactly. See, you know, um, but I guess he chose differently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so last weekend, uh, um, Stuart wanted to do like an 80-mile gravel ride, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and I was asking Bob Ruther, like, where, you know, if there's any courses he knew. And he said, oh, there's a, there was an iron tour. It was a 100-mile ride that started in Kimberton. Right. He's like, yeah, see if you can find that route. And, of course, Bob doesn't use a cycling computer. He's just, <laughs> he's lucky to have a watch on, you know, one yeah. of those types. And uh, so I went to Strava, and I found several people that had recorded it. But I couldn't export the GXP file to put it on my, my Wahoo. Oh, okay, so that's this is probably if you can find it now because right. I actually choose minimize elevation. So let me see what the what the change is. Yeah. Uh, so um, because Wahoo uses Ride with GPS, I just went to their website and found someone that had the whole route, and then I was able to export it from there import it into my routes and then sync up my Wahoo and right. then I had the file on there. Um, so, I mean, you know, there's, there was definitely some pitfalls with, uh, Strava with, uh, with its current thing. And you, you can only export from people that you're following or that yeah. you're friends with. Um, so the default was more stringent than just allowing you to share any rides. Right. Yeah, so that's. I thought it was it was uh, was interesting, and um, um, they have a small tutorial how to how to work with it. And this is the one that I created. And um, again, you can select um, and you can export a GPX file or a TCX file, uh, duplicate the route, and then build from there. Um, if you want to make it publicly available. Um, so that's uh, that's nice um, mm -hmm. to do that. I think that's uh, that's a great uh, great yeah. feature. Yeah. It's also interesting how uh, have you created a segment in Strava? Uh, that's a long time ago. Um, okay. But um, yeah. So if there's uh, like a new trail at Marsh Creek right. and I ride it and no one's created a segment, I'll go in and create the segment. But by default, it goes to your hidden segments. So it's not public. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so you have to manually flip it to be public, and then you yeah. see the, the, you know, the whole leaderboard, um, which I thought was interesting. I don't know why they would default to be hidden. Um, but even like Ted King on his ride right. that he did all through Vermont, there was three hidden segments that he took the KOM on, but you had to click on the show hidden segments and then you saw it in there. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a good segue into, uh, Ted King's ride. Uh, yeah. so he rode from Vermont to 
Vermont. <laughs> you yeah. went from north to south. Yeah. From north to south. So that's uh, um, there was also any. Uh, I think he captured it on. Uh, it's on YouTube and it's. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It was a beautiful video. Um, he had help from a friend that um, was born and raised in Vermont, and he figured the whole route out for him. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know Ted was going to do it all in one day. He thought it was going to be a multi-day trip. <laughs> He's like, oh, my God, you're going to do this whole thing? Yeah. The but the video, it's a beautiful video. And then to see him get out of a warm, dry truck into the pouring rain, start his ride you know and he's talking about all the gear that he needs for it like yeah. extra jersey two extra pairs of bibs you know <laughs> i mean it's just it's nuts like what he what he went through that day yeah. um I, I haven't seen it yet but uh they have uh he has a i think he has a team helping him with with creating the content uh, yes but it's uh um, it's very well captured, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at it right now, uh, but it's uh, it's raining um, in the d in the dark. He's starting in the dark, but uh, look at the pouring rain. Yeah, yeah. And it's also three three hundred ten miles, ninety percent gravel roads, um, and he did it in twenty two hours. 34,000 mm -hmm. feet of climbing. Yeah. Yeah. And at one point, uh, the former pro Ian Bosworth uh, joined him. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it was like only for 40 miles. And Ian was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> and Ted had to keep going. <laughs> and you just see him going into convenience stores. And he's like, let me get a Red Bull. Let me get a coffee and some maple syrup. And he's just got bags of food, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just bags of donuts and whatever you know uh it's it's interesting you know once you get that furnace going you can just throw anything in there you oh, know and oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah and and that's 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 also very interesting the um uh, Lawrence and Dom, he also talks about that with his dirty cancelled when he did 200 miles is that the amount that you need to eat in order to to fuel yourself and, and and you know for a fact that you're always running against a deficit you, you simply yeah. can't f fuel at at the rate that you are burning mm -hmm. um, so how, how do you optimize that um, so they are just eating so much <laughs> and, and, yeah. and like you said it's uh, that whole bike is cliff bars and uh, energy blocks and all kinds of just power of foods in order to uh, uh, yeah, keep the furnace burning as you as you mentioned yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's uh, and I actually um, I ordered uh, some uh, some uh, cliff blocks on uh, uh, online actually and uh, do you do you use cliff I do blocks yeah I yeah but great. for our events you know they're pretty y you may just use one sleeve of them, you know, yeah, exactly. um, we're not doing like all day. What I thought was interesting about Lawrence, um, in his video was mm -hmm. that he said you get, uh, flavor fatigue, right. Yes. And he's like, so you just have to bring all different stuff. Like you can only have so many cherry, yeah. you know, shot blocks. It's like, you gotta throw something else in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they're eating a, a cheese sandwich and they are, um, I don't know something else that they are eating so to, to just change it up because uh, and if you only eat and drink very sweet stuff you at some point and you you overdo it you overeat that um, you, you get st stomach pain stomach aches um, and yeah. uh, uh, potentially cramps and uh, and even worse and that's that's obviously obviously something that you want to want to prevent from happening and uh, so if I, um, and I still haven't figured it out, I, I, I know for me that I've actually always have been under eating. I to actually need to eat more. So there are, I think there are mm. a couple of rules of thumb is that thumb, um, you, it's one gram carb carbs per, uh, kilo body weight. 
Mm -hmm. right? So I'm uh, 84, 85 kilos. So that would mean per hour I could eat up to. Then there is another rule of thumb is that uh, you can only do 60 per hour, depending mm -hmm. on uh, the intensity and the effort that, that you are doing. Mm -hmm. There have been recent studies where they say you can actually get up to 100 or 110 or 120 even um, intake on, on uh, uh, carbs per, per hour. Um, but that, that's a lot of, a lot of food, right? Yeah. Even for me, if I have to do 80 or 90 per hour, that's, that's almost undoable. And I'll, I'll, I'll switch my screen and show you why. So these are the, the, the cliff blocks. Um, I like them because they are soft and you can quite easily uh, um, eat them. So there are two servings per packet. So it's six of these small blocks um, uh, in, in, one, in one second, mm -hmm. in one packet. And um, so it's 200 in total and it's 50, 48 grams of carb carbs in there. Um, so I think for me the balance is, is pretty good. So it's 248, right? So you because you, I don't know, you do want to limit the, the calorie intake but get as much carbs in there as as possible um, yeah. the, the 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 cliff bars for example yeah, let me see. Yeah, i don't know if you saw the video of the hack with those uh, cliff blocks but all these yeah. um do you know the video i'm talking about no okay yeah this, uh, some of the sponsored riders were saying the only thing they don't like about the blocks is the packaging because you have to tear it and then you have this little tab and like how you get it out and then the cube comes out to the side and they showed you if you flip it upside down and just squeeze the block, squeeze the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Bo the bottom pops open and then you can just eat them oh, like that. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I see. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you compare, so the, the blocks were 200 calories and 48 the cliff bar is 260 calories for one bar and it's 43 carbs in there. Mm. So again, if you take the rule of thumb, I, I, I need to eat two bars per hour. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. Because it's, that's just a lot. I, I eat, I always try to eat every other hour, but just as a, and and my my drink is always just electrolytes with a, a very small amount of of carbs, just not to get too much sweetness into my into my belly, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. um, so that's interesting to to think about. Um, and 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 over here also you have the magnesium and your potassium, calcium um, electrolytes that you lose during uh, your exercise through through sweating, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so when we interviewed Rich Drew, he was yeah. talking about the carnivore diet and ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried that for a few years in the off season. Right. And it is powerful in that you burn fat over carbs. Yeah. Um, but it's just really not that sustainable until they came out with the ketone esters. So I don't know if you've tried those. No. But it's a little drink and, and it tastes like, uh, I don't know, it tastes like nail polish remover. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty horrible, but you just, you take it 10, 10 minutes before your event yeah. and, it, and it kicks your body into deep ketosis. So as soon as you start your race, you know, I would take these at a race, uh, you're burning all, all the fat. And so you have all this energy and you're fresh. Yeah. So you're burning fat, and then once it wears off, then you're into carbs. So then you're just it, it almost kicks in another gear. Um, so you can you can make your last lap the fastest because now you're burning all that the carbs at the end and the sugars and stuff. Uh, and the stuff is really it it's night and day different. Um, 
And I've noticed, uh, like Phil Guyman, he, whenever he gets his longer KOMs, mm -hmm. he uses those and he's sponsored by them. They're, uh, there's a company HVMN, like human, but with a V, uh, yeah. and they make the ketone esters. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap. It's like $30 a bottle. Um, you buy them in a pack of three. So it's like a hundred dollars for three servings. Um, but I mean, if you're going for a big event or something like that, stuff is really, really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, a lot of people, um, maybe either overanalyze it, but also overdo it, um, right? Eat too much for, um, too small of an effort, right? If you're doing an intense race for an hour or maybe even an hour and a half, you, like you said, you, you, you probably need a couple of, uh, uh clip blocks, um, and, and you'll be fine and something to drink to hydrate. Uh, but you really don't need too much because the, 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 the glycogen and, and the energy that you have stored in your body should, should be sufficient. Um, right. and, and the day off and the race off, it's just to give you an extra small kick. Um, uh, if you, for example, look at the, um, um, the cliff blocks, they also have... caffeine mm -hmm. in there right so that's that's a uh, um, an extra stimulants <laughs> or s uh, how do you call it mm -hmm. um, which will which will help you um, instead of drinking some coffee but uh, so that's that's interesting to uh, for everybody to to look into okay how much do you need and 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 uh, like I said it these are rules of thumb uh, it's it's different per person right, right? how, how it, um, how how quick is your metabolism? Uh, are there any other factors that you need to take in account? Um, but uh, um, restoring and uh, uh, making sure that you hydrate well, etc. That's uh, it is very important. Right, right. I like we're planning a longer ride for this Sunday, and I don't know. Are you planning to eat six uh, Cliff bars during that ride? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, I, I did a long, longer ride uh, this past Sunday. It was close to four and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I, I did it on uh, two, uh, two of these uh, packets of uh, cliff blocks. Yeah. But it's also because I we it was a fairly low pace. So I wasn't burning a lot of, let's say, glycogen out of my muscles. I did a couple of sprints uphill, um, but... Uh, on average, it was a zone one, two effort. So I was burn. I, I think I was more in my fat burning zones th than I was actually burning uh, a lot of uh, glycogen uh, yeah. out of my uh, out of my muscle. So um, and it was also testing myself um, uh, doing that, um, and that's. So and, and, uh, and we spoke about that. I do the uh, in every day intermittent fasting. Um, and uh, I try to do a fasted ride now and then, mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of um, expanding. So I know now for a fact when I when I and of obviously you you need to have eaten well the night before, right? If right. you if you eat garbage <laughs> for the whole week, right? Uh, uh, processed food or not 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 good uh, uh, micronutrition nutritious food, etc. Um, you still have an issue, but if you eat properly um, and you do a fast at right, um, I'm, I can I can say I can do a, a fairly good effort and and don't need to eat for another three hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and it's it, for me it's just testing. So it's it's trying to see okay, where does it stop? Um, is bonking going to happen <laughs> somewhere? Yeah. Right. Um, and actually, the guys from Trainer Road have a, a recent podcast on that, um, and they say um, you'll you'll never run out of fu fuel. Your your body simply won't allow it. Mm -hmm. um, that the glycogen in your muscles it will probably be never be depleted below uh, fifty percent. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other things that come into play and mentally is also an aspect that comes into play with, with bonking 
yeah. um, because otherwise if it would be completely depleted you, you couldn't move anymore <laughs> right, <laughs> right? Um, and that's that's never going to happen your body won't allow that to happen so um so that's that's uh, that's absolutely an interesting um interesting podcast to uh, to to listen to uh, i yeah. would recommend they have very very good content mm -hmm. so um one of the the other things and uh, it's completely changing topic and up until now we kind of <laughs> moved from one topic into another so there was yeah. a good flow and we're going to turn it around uh, let me see if i can uh uh, because the oh, let me let me start with something else. Um, okay. Oops. Please bear with me. So what is super cool, and uh, we are very happy with that, is that this is uh, this shows our podcast in the last last ninety days. So we basically started early April. Um, and it's now early June, so we are April, May, yeah, we're, we're two and a half months uh, in, um, mm -hmm. and we're getting close to a thousand down, uh, downloads of our uh, of our podcast. So nice. I, I think that's 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 amazing. So uh, uh, everybody that's listening or watching and have listened to our podcast, uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy it. We we love to get feedback. Um, I think that's uh, that's important to us. And um, uh, yeah, I think people are enjoying it. So that the last podcast with uh, with Jasper was uh, was was great. Um, was received really really well. I I got very good comments, whether it's on uh, Strava or on uh, uh, other messaging uh, uh, boards. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, so let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, I was uh, I had to go run some errands today, and so I went to tune in on my Tesla, and there was the episode with the interview. So I was listening to that as I was driving around yeah. since I wasn't able to make that uh, that interview. But it was great. It was really interesting to hear his take on BMX and how it had changed right before the Olympics, yes. like right as soon as he kind of took a step back from it, yeah. and then. He said like the train was leaving and he couldn't get back on the train, you know, which is, I think it's a good metaphor. Um, but it's just amazing how something could be similar for so long and then all of a sudden, because it's got the Olympic attention, it just drastically changes. Changes, yeah. And I, I, I remember back then, um, he, he triggered that memory where um, he, uh, um, it, it, it the courses did change um, and, and and a lot of people struggled with it and he yeah. coming back from his injury where he freaking broke his back so back, that's yeah. crazy um, couldn't get back on anymore um, oh, it's, uh, I have to say we have to say hi to to Brandon and uh, and Rosemary they are eating pizza and watching uh, watching the show so <laughs> 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 thanks for thanks for joining yeah, um, thanks to Rosemary too for uh, introducing us to some great guests. Oh know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. she's uh, she's been amazing. So uh, she's getting back on the track. I think I believe she is going back to the uh, to the track tomorrow. So she's pretty excited of uh, yeah. going there. So uh, together with uh, with Kim actually. So Kim is her her coach. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, if you look on on the screen, is that uh, you see the absolutely trending upwards <laughs> yeah so that's uh, yeah it's it's great it's uh um hopefully people recognize and and see the the time and the effort that you're putting in and, and getting exciting guests uh, there and it's uh, it's just nice to hear and i think very motivating people like rich and jasper and kim everybody having their own cycling stories and careers and um, explain why they love cycling and what it does to them. And uh, again, if I look at uh, Jasper, him combining being a pilot, uh, traveling all across the, the, the globe, uh, having a YouTube channel where he captures that. Um, uh, yeah, that's 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 great. Uh, what 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 a great opportunity for him also to be able to do that. And at the very end, we also talk about something that 
that that many many people um, deal with and struggle with is how do you balance all of that with with your family life with your work um, and that's uh, um, the support that that you're getting from from your your family from your spouse from your kids from your um, whomever is there um, it's uh, it's uh, it's special uh, yeah. to be able to do that yeah absolutely yeah. Yes. So this is this is cool, um, and uh, um, as mentioned uh, last time, th this Wednesday, um, uh, Mandy Margard um, will be uh, the next uh, podcast that we uh, that we are going to release, and um, that's what I wanted to show because Mandy actually, amongst a, a number of other um, cyclists, got uh, selected for the. Uh, the Olympic uh, long team, so that's basically the first selection um, long team, 13 months before the Olympics. Um, so there will be another selection round, uh, but she made uh, made the, the the long team. So that's uh, that's that's pretty amazing, and uh, congratulations to her and, yeah. and everybody else. So that's uh, that's that's really cool. Yeah, really cool. What I what I particularly <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's because. Uh, I have two daughters, but <laughs> if you look at all these different disciplines, the women's women outnumber the men in every in every category. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did notice, notice that too. Yeah. It's it's, am it's amazing. Do they only have two men that qualified, or was it just the selection? I I don't know. It probably the the, the women's, the, but I think the matter of the fact is that there are more qualified candidates within the women than there are with the men. That it will yeah. be probably narrow it down to I don't know three or four or two how many um, spots there are but the fact is that apparently there are more women at at this moment that made um, the, the the long team so that's uh, I think that's special and I remember us talking about um, women cycling with with a couple of our guests actually but um, with um, um the guys from from pickle um and Michael oh, todd. and todd yeah yeah um and we talked about equity in um, women cycling right equity meaning um as many women cycling as as men in in, in mountain biking but also if you look at the the, the crater scheme of things is uh, also looking at payment and looking at um, media attention, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How can we work towards uh, equity for for women more? Um, and I think these programs over here are already showing that. Um, and um, I think that's that's great to see, right? If you look at the woman women's road uh, long team, obviously you have Chloe Digert over here, um, Lauren Stephens. At, at it's. <laughs> Wow. She, she is very active on Swift also, um, and she has joined our ride for two or three times, the, the, the Dutch diesel ride. Um, last Thursday, she was there, and she was chatting and talking to everybody and really verbal. So that's, uh, that's, that's really, really cool, uh, being that engaged. And I think, that, um, I think that's, that's great to be uh, um, that, that, that verbal and so visible for, for the community, basically. Um, a number of pro riders, uh, Jumbo Visma, EFO, EF uh, Pro Cycling. Um, so that's that's super cool. Um, and then uh, again, the, the women's uh, the women's team over here. Um, so yeah, um, pretty excited. It's it's going to be a while, uh, but uh, it was nice. One of the things that, um, and I recorded it one of the things that was said at the very end so so what's next for cycling what does cycling need what if you have a wish list um, and uh, the guy from USA cycling said we need more funding for uh, uh, to build more velodromes because apparently and that's true <laughs> apparently that does deliver a lot of talent um, yeah starting on the track and then moving into mountain biking and or road cycling mm -hmm. so that's uh, that that's pretty cool 
Um, yeah, that, uh, that, that brings, brings up, up a good um, question that we had for Mandy, which was asking about what other sports uh, tend to generate um, or be a good feeder for uh, track racing. Right. And I think her, uh, her answer was interesting. I never heard that before, but she said gym, uh, gymnasts actually make really good track cyclists. Um, so that's, you know, I mean, if you have a good gym program and someone gets injured and then they come over to cycling, they can, they can you know, switch over to track cycling and probably be very successful at it. Right. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that I forgot. I have to take a note and make sure that we discuss it next week there was a whole article super interesting article and it was basically women cycling in the netherlands um, and it was uh, written by i believe somebody from from england um, why just decade after decade they are able to be at the top of women cycling um, and apparently they have this whole let's say a dozen um, uh, juniors um, heading to to the to the big stage um, uh, again, um, and they talk about that. And it's uh, uh, there, there are a, a, a couple of local clubs in the Netherlands that is helping that. Then you have the uh, the, the the National Cycling Federation that that has a really really good program. But you also have a lot of these facilities. So. Um, uh, we have a lot of tracks, <laughs> uh, a lot of ve velodromes. We have a lot of um, closed um, uh, circuits, basically, um, one, two miles, and it's it's completely closed from all other traffic. Um, so there's a lot of facilities for especially young cyclists to 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 get into cycling in in a safe and controlled way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they talk about that. It's super interesting. I have to, I have to um, uh, discuss that a little bit more in depth uh, uh, next week. I think it's very, very interesting. Uh, yeah. Again, there's, there's been, been there's, there's been, been talk, talk for probably ten years, years now about a velodrome being built, built in Coatesville, yeah, Pennsylvania, yeah, so not, not too far from us. And it was going to be a multi-use facility. facility. Mm -hmm. Uh, centered, centered around, around the track, the velodrome, velodrome but, but then, then also, also having a BMX track around there, um, training uh, uh, crits, crits and things, things around there too. So, so really, really make it a hub for all kinds of um, racing, racing, which I think, I think would be phenomenal. You know, uh, just another avenue for people, people to race around, around here. here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We have to see what we uh, what we can do there. Um, let me see. You, you had one or two other... Yeah, yeah. So, so I just, I just want to bring up one thing. thing. Um, my, my friend, friend and uh, fellow racer from, from the road, um, Stefan Kincaid, who we all call him Geronimo, mm -hmm. he, uh, he went, went pro in his 30s uh, with Rite Aid and had a very successful um, career uh, racing road. Super, Super fast, fast guy, guy right? right? And... He, uh, uh, when, when he retired, retired from racing, he got, he got into mountain biking, biking was the Cannondale rap, rap, and he posted, he posted recently that he was been riding his e-bike, e -bike, and he was late to get an e-mountain e bike, and was yeah. kind of like, ah, this is cheating or whatever, but he said, he's, he's completely convinced now that that, that is, is the way of the future, and he has been building trails out in Birdsboro, okay. and they have, they have some, some trails that are only accessible on e-bike e because they require so much power to get through them, them and it's just a chunky rock, rock and steep uphills, uphills that, uh, as, as he said, said they're not, not rideable, rideable on an acoustic, acoustic bike. bike. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> one without the battery. And uh, they, they do group rides, weekend rides that are 75, 80 miles. miles. So, so they, they really, really couldn't be... be you, you, First, First of all, the, the train, train wouldn't let you take an acoustic, acoustic bike, and then just the, the distance, distance, you couldn't, couldn't cover it, it you know, know, in the daylight, uh, unless, unless you were on one of these bikes. bikes. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's interesting. interesting. I wonder if this, this will be the trend. We're going to see tougher and tougher, and tougher courses, courses that can only be ridden with, with by using an assisted bike. bike. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 in, again, in the Netherlands, uh, e-bikes have, but, but you have so many people commuting, so it's really for commuting yeah. um, and that's uh, it has been a really
big um, big thing for 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 a couple of years now um, but you also have rich rich drew who um, is uh, i think he just got his uh, e mountain bike and uh, the fat tire type of bike and uh, i remember um, I, I, I test rode a couple of uh, track uh, bikes and uh, they they are a lot of fun and yeah. especially the the higher end they will bring you up to close to 30 miles an hour and it's pedal assist so you, it's yeah. not like uh, you have a throttle or anything now you just set it at a certain speed and it mm -hmm. will assist you uh, but it's it's uh, yeah it's th the power is immediately there and you just feel your feel yourself moving forward it's it's a lot of fun yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel like, like I, I need, need to give, give it a try, try now. I, I, I know, know some, some other people, people that, that bought them for winter. winter. They, they put, put big, big fat tires, tires on it, and they ride it in the snow, snow and, and it makes, makes just winter riding, riding better, better, you know. You know. But, but it was still, 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 still kind of seemed like, like a novelty. novelty. Mm -hmm. um, but, but now, now hearing, hearing this feedback, feedback and that, that there are potential trails that I'm not even aware of because it was... I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able, able to ride, ride them. them. Now it's, it's kind of got, got my curiosity. curiosity. So, so going, going with, with the theme, theme and, and plus one. one. And a... Right. Uh, Jeff froze up a little bit. Let's see. Ding, ding. Are you back? Sorry, Sorry I, I think I, I froze there for a minute. minute. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're back. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we can um, um, do some research and uh, look at the the different uh, different e e bikes, e mountain bikes. Um, it's been a while since I looked into that, but uh, it's, uh, it's it's really interesting. And the batteries get smaller. I actually have a friend who who bought a uh, a track hybrid bike, um, and he was able to. Um, make it into an e-bike mm -hmm. um, so that was really interesting so he basically added the battery and and the the, the electromotor uh, to to help him with with the pedal assist and he, he loves it it and uh, he, he thinks it's great and it allows him to go out and and cycle with his son <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah because he just gets that extra extra boost literally um and and, mm -hmm. and keeping up with his son uh, more easily so that's uh it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, one, one other topic that I had, uh, which I found very interesting, is that uh, Zip, uh, the, the wheels, a wheel manufacturer, has uh, come out with the, a new Zip 303 uh, uh, rim. Uh, yes. yes. I think it's... Uh, yeah, let me uh, let let me switch the. So if uh, Brandon and Rosemary are still on, I, I know that they are looking at uh, at new rims. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's funny. funny. We, we haven't, haven't even spoken spoke about, about this, this, but it's, it's definitely, definitely on my radar. radar of my, my next, next set of wheels. wheels. Um, the, the, as, as the trend, trend is with, with having, having tubeless, tubeless yeah. and, and wide, wide rims, rims, and, and I'm, a I'm a big, big fan, fan of the center, center lock, lock disc brake. Disc brake. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then, and then you want lightweight, lightweight of, course, of course, and, and aero, aero is all the rage, rage too. too. I mean, this, this just, just checks, checks all, all the boxes. boxes. Yeah. And, then and then the price, price is like, price is like, price is ridiculous. ridiculous. 1200 $1, retail. retail. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that's, I mean, I mean <laughs> you used to buy one wheel for that. Exactly. exactly. The, front, the front wheel. Um, and now you buy a set for $1,200. Right, right. And it, it's basically got, like you said, it got it ticks all the boxes, and it's yeah, uh, yeah. they're a little bit heavier than the uh, what's it, the Firecrest. Uh, but it, again, it's you're talking about a hundred to two hundred grams. Right, right. Um, f for somebody like me, that's I don't know. I, I probably need to eat two donuts mm -hmm. less per week, and then I'll <laughs> also saving two hundred grams. But um, yeah, plus yeah, plus they uh, label, label on there, there you, know? you know, so, yeah, so you would expect, expect that kind of price, price from, from you, know, you know, some, some knockoff, knock you know, that you see on, on yeah, you know, yeah. eBay, eBay or something. Or something. Yeah. The only thing that I'm wondering on is what they say it's uh, hookless, and that's also what you see. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that, you see that doesn't have that the hook where you, you fold your, 
but that's probably because it's it's tubeless only. Right, right. Um, so I, I think that's, and, and, and the last week we spoke about technology, <laughs> right? And <laughs> um, seeing more and more technology innovation, but this is uh, this is yet another example of of a wheel set, um, and. Uh, What's also interesting is that you uh, there is a piece of software, but there is also a table. So this is the SIP website, um, which kind of gives you the uh, where is it? There is basically a table uh, ah, over here. Sorry. So your weight. Right, uh, mm -hmm. let's say 187. So it, it it gives you the the tire pressure that you need, looking at the width of the tire. Mm -hmm. So this is the but, but look at look at no, this number. It's 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 66 to 70. Yeah, yeah well 32. 32 you're, you're down, down to what 55, 58. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, that's. Uh, that's it's and and that's that's and and, uh, <laughs> and uh, we didn't talk about these wheels. I, I don't think I even realized that they were out. But we talked about the tire pressure, how important that it is, ab absorbing little bumps and 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 when you go on the cobbles or on gravel, uh, the fact that it absorbs those um, those bumps will actually make you go faster. Mm -hmm. Right, compared to the old days where you were, were looking at 90 to 100 <laughs> as, as hard as possible, but you like everything was cramping up, and your 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 fatigue and your whole body uh, was was so immense. And now with that lower tire pressure, it will actually help you to go quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 it's probably also leaning much more towards these more extreme rides like Stuart is now doing 300 <laughs> miles right for 300 miles i would most definitely pick the 32 mil <laughs> right mm -hmm. with a lower tire pressure especially yeah. when you're hitting some gravel and uh yeah again i think the, like you said it's uh, it ticks all the boxes it's uh, it's it's an amazing wheel set I did, I did look, look at, at uh, when, when it's available, available and, and, and I, I think it gets sold out, out until, until August. August. Yeah, yeah. It's probably something for uh, for next year. But it's it's uh, like I said, it's a multi-purpose type of wheel. So it's 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 gravel, it's road. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'd I'd use I use a cross, cross racing. racing. For cross, mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? It's uh, absolutely. Uh, you can fit any tubeless tire that 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 you want. So. That's, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know, know if you saw, saw that, that um, you know, know who SRAM came, came out, out with, with their, their mountain bike, bike 12, twelve speed cassette. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a ten, a 10 fifty, 50 right? right? Yeah. And, and then, then Shimano was very, very late, late to release, release their, their twelve speed. speed. They came, came out with ten, 10 fifty one. So is <laughs> 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 it one, one, one bigger? bigger. Yeah. And, and SRAM, SRAM today said, said they are coming, coming out, out with a 1052. 10 <laughs> 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 yeah. it's back, back in Shimano's, Shimano's court, court for their 53. 53. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's already the case when you look at, uh, let's say, the single speed, mm -hmm. your, your front um, is, is, is smaller than your rear cog, the, the, the 50, the 51. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the other it's the world upside down basically right 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 right, right. It was always like yeah yeah so that's yeah, yeah and even, even ted, ted king, king did that, that whole ride, ride on one by yeah, yeah that yeah, cannondale, cannondale that was uh i believe it was full suspension, suspension. yeah cannondale, cannondale and uh he only had 12 gears, gears to get him over thirty thousand feet of climbing so it's yeah and i i remember when i i don't know 15 years ago racing mountain bike and I, I I had a pretty decent group uh, uh, XTR um, but it was so lightweight that I would bend the the, the, the largest chain 
ring at, at the back all the time and it would frustrate the heck out of me because I was just applying too much power yeah, um, yeah. and it would bend um, and it's uh, now apparently that problem isn't there anymore <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, uh, so that's uh, again also a piece of technology um, that that has improved massively yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah cool Okie dokie. Yeah, that's uh, those were the topics that I had. Yeah, for, yeah. For we're at eight o'clock, so, so I think we're, we're good. good. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, um, getting ready maybe, maybe. for the the rides tomorrow and Sunday. So that's uh, something to look uh, look forward to. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe next, next week, week we can talk, talk about, about those with power. power. We, can we can get to that. that. Uh, I don't know if you looked into that. That's announced today. The Swift Power. Yeah. No, I didn't. And I've okay, heard okay. about it. Yeah, yeah I'll send you the article. article. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we absolutely yeah, yeah. need to do that. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I know that, that Swift uh, released a new companion uh, app. Um, so it has a couple of nice uh, nice features. So they are absolutely building. Um, oh, I, I actually did uh, start and looked into um, the, the text virtual writing. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it was pretty good. Like we can also talk about that next uh, next week. It was uh, uh -huh. it was it was nice. Uh, I I felt good. like I was cheating on Swift. Um, so uh, I didn't sleep well. But uh <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, I'll uh, we'll we'll take that uh, on uh, on next week also. Yeah. Okay. 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 Excellent. Great. Great. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Jerry. Thanks Jeff. Thanks everybody. Okay. Thank you. See Thanks. Ya. Bye bye.